Have you ever pondered the mysteries of Easter Island? The mystery of those giant stone statues exploring where they came from, their journey across the island, and what happened to the people who called it home? Many centuries ago, a daring group of Polynesians set out on an adventurous expedition, navigating treacherous seas guided by the nighttime stars and ocean swells of the day. The details of their departure from their homeland remain a mystery, but what we now know is that they chose a small, uninhabited 63 square miles of paradise, with rolling hills and lush palm trees, a place now known as Rapa Nui, famous as Easter Island. Situated almost 4,000 kilometers west of Chile in the vast Pacific Ocean, Easter Island, or Rapa Nui, got its name from Dutch explorer Jacob Roggeveen, who arrived on Easter Sunday in 1722. The island is renowned for its numerous monumental statues, now known as Moai, scattered across the landscape. Scientists have estimated the statues to be around 900 of them. Besides the statues, Easter Island also boasts over 300 ceremonial platforms and various sculptures connected to agriculture, funerals, housing, production, and a range of other activities. In one version of the story, a small group of Polynesians settled on the island in the 13th century, located far off South America's western coast. As time went by, they transformed the once green and hilly land into fields and statues. But this transformation had a price, depleting the nutrient-rich fertile soil and leading the island towards a foreboding fate. As the trees vanished, so did the society, intricately linked to their existence. When Dutch explorers arrived in 1722, the society that had cut down the trees had already disappeared. However, recent findings suggest a different narrative. They indicate that the people of Rapa Nui, as they call the island, were not harming the environment, but were successful farmers when Europeans arrived. According to this version, other factors led to the end of a crucial era on Easter Island. These statues have puzzled scientists for years. They're a fantastic achievement of human civilization, carved from volcanic rock, mainly extracted from the Rana Raraku volcano quarry. The Moais stand at an average height of 4 meters and weigh around 13 to 15 tons, with some reaching even more impressive dimensions. The largest Moai, named Paro, rises to an imposing 10 meters and carries an astonishing weight of 80 tons. Most Moai face inland, sporting elongated beards, broad noses, and slender lips, keeping watch over the island's villages and fields. Why did people on Easter Island disappear? At first, scientists believed that this disappearance was due to an ecocide. The conventional narrative surrounding the Rapa Nui people suggests that they overexploited their natural resources, particularly trees, leading to deforestation, soil erosion, and ecological degradation. This environmental degradation supposedly resulted in famine, warfare, and a cultural collapse, causing a drastic reduction in the population from a peak of 15,000 to a few thousand by the time of European contact in the 18th century. However, recent archaeological and historical research challenges this narrative, presenting a more nuanced perspective on Rapa Nui's past. A new study provides evidence that contradicts the notion of a collapse, the researchers used new statistical methods and excavation data to date the construction and use of 74 Ahu across the island. Their findings reveal that these constructions spanned from the 13th to the 18th centuries, with no evidence of decline or cessation before the arrival of Europeans. This discovery suggests that the Rapa Nui people were not destitute or desperate upon first contact with Europeans. Instead, the researchers argue that they had a stable and resilient society that adapted to environmental and social changes. The Rapa Nui people implemented resource strategies such as crop rotation, water management, and selective harvesting to cope with limited resources and the island's variable climate. The study also proposes that the iconic Moai statues and Ahu platforms were not just expressions of religious and political power, but symbols of cooperation and community identity, crucial for maintaining social cohesion and harmony. Crafting these statues required precise chiseling, hammering, and polishing with stone tools. Subsequently, the statues were transferred to their designated spots called Ahu, which were ceremonial platforms along the coast. 
These ceremonial platforms also served as burial grounds for the islanders' ancestors. Some Moai sported stylish red scoria cylinders, known as pukau, resembling hats or top knots. These unique hats were crafted from a distinct quarry and mounted on the Moai after they were erected. Dr. Annalise Pontius, a distinguished professor at Harvard Medical School, has a unique theory. She believes that the islanders crafted these statues as a response to signs and symptoms of leprosy. According to her theory, witnessing deformities on crucial features for social interactions such as faces, fingers, arms, and hands might have prompted the islanders to correct these imperfections by creating statues with exaggerated features. Instead of banishing those with leprosy, a practice observed in Hawaii and Molokai, creating these Moai could have been their innovative way of addressing the issue. Undoubtedly, one of the most intriguing mysteries surrounding Easter Island centers on how the island's inhabitants managed to transport massive statues across challenging terrain, all without the aid of wheels, animals, or metal. Various theories have surfaced, including speculations involving extraterrestrial involvement, log rollers, or sleds. The initial theory proposes that the statues were carved from volcanic rock at a quarry called Ronararaku. Subsequently, they were transported to their final locations using log rollers, ropes, and sleds. This theory draws parallels with the methods employed by the other Polynesian cultures, such as the Maori of New Zealand, who use similar techniques for moving large stones in the construction of their monuments. It assumes that Easter Island was once densely wooded, providing an ample supply of wood for the construction of log rollers and sleds. Researchers Pavel Pavel and Charles Love conducted experiments in the 1980s and 1990s, using replicas of the statues and wooden logs to test their theory. Their findings indicated the plausibility of horizontally moving the statues by rolling them on logs with subsequent upright positioning facilitated by ropes and levers. Their estimates suggest a manpower requirement of 55 to 155 individuals for moving a single statue, with the entire process spanning a few weeks or months. However, this theory encounters certain limitations. It fails to explain how the statues were elevated onto platforms known as Ahu, often featuring elevated stone walls. Additionally, it neglects the potential environmental repercussions of deforestation, including soil erosion, habitat loss, and resource depletion. Also, scientists did not find any direct evidence such as remnants of logs, ropes, or sleds on the island. The second theory suggests that the statues were intentionally designed to move upright, utilizing a rocking motion. This movement is facilitated solely by manpower and rope. This theory builds upon the notion that the statues possess a unique shape and weight distribution, enabling them to tilt and rotate like a pendulum. It further assumes that the ancient Easter Island inhabitants had a sophisticated understanding of physics and geometry, and they purportedly coordinated their movements using chants and rhythms. To evaluate this alternative, researchers Terry Hunt and Carl Lipo conducted experiments in the 2000s and 2010s using replicas of the statues and nylon rope. Their experiments demonstrated the feasibility of vertically moving the statues by rocking them back and forth with steering accomplished by pulling the rope. Estimates suggested that a team of 15 to 20 individuals could move a statue, with the entire process requiring a few hours or days. Nevertheless, this particular hypothesis encounters several challenges. Firstly, it fails to explain the intricate process of carving and shaping the statues, tasks that demand considerable skill and precision. Secondly, it overlooks the extreme difficulty and risk associated with moving these statues across uneven and hilly terrain, where the threat of them falling or breaking looms large. Thirdly, the theory lacks concrete evidence such as discernible marks of ropes or wear on the statues within the confines of the island. A third theory proposes that the statues served as markers indicating sources of drinkable water on the island. It explains that the statues, with both symbolic and practical significance, represent the ancestors and guardians of the land and water. It further assumes that the ancient inhabitants of Easter Island maintained a complex and adaptable relationship with their environment, utilizing the statues for resource management and rituals. To test this theory, a research team led by Robert DiNapoli undertook a study in the 2020s, 
employing spatial analysis and hydrological modeling. Their findings revealed a strong correlation between the statue's locations and the availability of fresh water, particularly in coastal areas where groundwater seeps from the rocks. They proposed that the statue served as markers for water access, playing a pivotal role in the social and religious organization of the island. Despite these insights, the theory also faces challenges. It does not clarify the statue creation and movement process, leaving questions about the labor and coordination involved. It also did not address the variability and uncertainty of water supply, which are influenced by factors such as rainfall, tides, and seasons. None of the proposed theories have been conclusively proven or supported by archaeological evidence. Another puzzle on Easter Island centers around the fate of the statue creators and the cessation of statue production. A prevalent myth proposes a catastrophic collapse due to overpopulation and resource depletion. According to this narrative, the island has depleted all trees for statue movement, causing soil erosion, crop failure, and starvation. Allegedly resorting to warfare, cannibalism, and self-destruction, they left behind a desolate land. This myth faces challenges from recent research, suggesting a more nuanced history. Islanders did not deplete all their trees, but rather managed them sustainably, using alternative materials like reeds and vines for moving statues. They adapted to environmental changes, diversified their diet and agriculture, and thrived until the arrival of Europeans. Diseases, slavery, and exploitation brought by Europeans caused a significant population decline, refuting the notion that internal factors were the primary cause. These revelations about Easter Island reveal the remarkable achievements and resilience of its people, challenging stereotypes and myths. It reframes Easter Island not as a cautionary tale of ecological disaster and human folly, but as a testament to human ingenuity and adaptation. If you like this video, click on the screen to watch another video like this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.